Hi everybody, um, my name's Sam Barnett and I'm the talent producer for Film Hub North. You're about to watch a recording of a BFI Film Academy Lab session on creating commercial content with Alfie Barker. The BFI Film Academy Labs are all about helping 16 to 25 year olds break into the screening industries. These monthly practical sessions are led by industry professionals with the focus on explaining the specifics of working in film and television and developing your skills to become the best screen creative you can be. The labs are programmed across three strands, storytelling, business of film, and career ladder. We hope you enjoy today's session. Just to kick off, um, can you tell us a little bit about how you started off in the film industry? Yeah, I guess, um, rolling back the years a little bit, I was, I kind of first found film, film filmmaking through the Legion Film Festival when I was about eight years old I think it was um I was really kind of obsessed with like Chicken Run and Wallace and Gromit when I was super young and I remember I was really annoying my mum and dad one Easter holiday and they, they took me to like an admin stop motion animation kind of workshop that was being run and I just remember like being so amazed by the fact that this piece of clay that we were making like if you take loads of photos it could move and you can kind of tell a story of, through it and like the magic of it was just kind of mind blowing. Um, so yeah, from from then on, I just kind of became obsessed with film and did a lot of work with the Legion Film Festival. I was like a young programmer there for like a few years. So I was surrounded by like a lot of European independent cinema. Um, and then from then, like uh, I did the BFI Film Academy when I was 16, I think. I think it was the first year at the NFTS kind of craft residential thing, I think they call it now. Um, where I directed a film with a team of people and um yeah I mean that kind of changed things for me that was kind of like a life-changing moment um because yeah I'd gone from like making films independently with like neighbors and stuff and like whatever I could kind of get off the ground to to, to work in a full team um and then through from then on I kind of went on I didn't go to like film school just because of like money and situation stuff um and kind of just went down the independent route of making my own films and like sending them out to film festivals and competitions, just seeing what, what would happen kind of thing. Um, meanwhile, like working alongside in like a restaurant kind of bar. And then I guess one, like I did a short, that like kind of won an award at a festival. I could get some kit and it kind of snowballed from there really. Um, to the, I mean, skipping a few years. So I my first kind of funded short, which was with BBC Arts, like a spoken word film. And then more recently, I guess, uh, I think it was 2021, I made a short called Hanging On, um, which was funded by Doc Society. And um, and then following that, I made a short film called Warm. And then more recently with Film Hub North, uh, Halfway, which is my latest kind of fiction project. Um, but yeah, that's in a nutshell. We're flown through it. <laughs> No, that's amazing. So yeah, you've done absolutely loads. So it really kickstart started with taking part in the BFI Film Academy program and kind of take learning a bit of independence, team working skills and things like that. And I'm sure there's loads of people watching this session now that are either doing one of the academies or have done in the past and they're kind of thinking about what they want to do next um for that. So that's really useful that you've kind of shown us what that journey is looking like. Um I think we've got a trailer of halfway to have a little look at. Um yes. Yeah, so this is the late, yeah, latest kind of, yeah, fiction project I've worked on. I want smoking inside! Oh, you're not listening to me! So what are you going to do when you get out? I want to work in an art gallery. Really? Artists just end up being skint though, don't they? I just can't wait to afford a sunbed, me. That's absolutely brilliant. You do know how to make a trailer for that. How have you, <laughs> how is Halfway done in terms of the festival run? Um, So it feels quite fresh, but the Halfway is a project that I've kind of been working on uh, for a while. We shot it in 2022, actually, and a little bit of 2023. Um, in terms of the festival run, it screened at Leeds Film Festival, premiered there last October. Um, and we're lucky enough to win the Best British uh, Short Film Award, um, which is really cool. 
And, but yeah, I think that kind of, it's my most recent, but it's also kind of the first time I've worked with like so many kind of characters, bit of an ensemble piece, um, which is kind of like what I like tried to do with some of my shorts, like trying to push different areas that maybe I'm not fully confident with. Um, as I'm kind of like at the minute working towards my first feature, like working on more long form content. So, um, but yeah, it was always mainly a character driven piece more than anything. And we're sending it out to festivals and seeing what happens next, basically. Fantastic. Um, so once you'd kind of you've taken part in the BFI Film Academy, you've got a little bit of experience of working with people in a team. What what were some of your early projects like? Could you could you run through some of those with us? Yeah, it's it's a hustle, isn't it? Because you're in that weird gap of like wanting funding, but like still having to kind of do maybe a couple another shot by yourself to kind of prove you're not worthy of funding, but to, to, to hone your voice a little bit more. Um, because it's so competitive to kind of get to kind of get that short film funding. Um, so I think I think after the film academy, so I didn't go to uni, but I made a lot of mates on um, the, the network of people that I met. They were at uni, and I remember I really wanted to make a short film with everyone, just to kind of keep that energy going. And I actually used some of the people that were at uni, like their uni equipment and like all their kind of facilities. So I've kind of like cheekily kind of backdoored it getting in. Um, and we made this short, it's called I Was Free. And yeah, that kind of went to like one or two festivals, but it was just a really, um, you know, that was that was me working with a bigger crew than I've worked with before, because before the Film Academy and like, I didn't really understand how everyone's roles kind of work together as a team and like the importance of a producer as well. I think that was the kind of main thing that I was kind of learning because it is so important that producer director relationship and how, you know, them kind of a producer kind of had adding their voice in and also taking away a lot of the kind of stress and the the logistical side of it, you know, so you can actually focus on um the creative. So I think from in, from that, yeah, I've always kind of done my, my passion projects, but I kind of made it a bit of a pact to myself that I wanted to make each project, I wanted to make a little bit. You know, I wanted to go up a level in some way as possible, even if it's like learning something I haven't done before and it kind of scared me a bit. Because, I mean, that is what shorts are for, you know. Yes, you want them to be the best thing, but, like, I kind of like, I kind of enjoy trying something that I've never done before because it might go wrong, but that is the kind of point and experiment of of doing kind of short form. Um, but I guess in terms of commercial content as well, because um, at that point I was like, okay, how am I going to make money out of this a little bit? And like, what does that even look like? Um, I did some music videos. So after I was three, um, I did some music videos with the crews that I met and friends of friends that I met on this set. Um, and we managed to get like really low budget things. There was a couple in London. Obviously I'm based up in Leeds, um, but I had some friends I could stay with, so it wasn't too bad, but um yeah, we made a music video, a couple of them, and I mean, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with them. They're amazing and a great calling card to like, you know, for you to experiment and show you um, what you, you know, what you could do with a little bit of money and like, um, yeah. And from then, from then, how did I get into it? I put them on Instagram. I just remember I posted like a couple of these music videos, like, oh, I've just done this kind of thing. And I was working full time at a pub at the time. And one of the locals who was at the pub who I didn't realize she worked for an agency and she was kind of following me and she saw I did a music video and she's like, oh, um, would you be interested in doing like something for Primark? It's a really low budget. You know, it might not be your vibe. And I was like, yeah, that would be really cool. Um, mm. You know, I'm not done. I'm not, I wasn't very fashionable either. So I was just like, this is surprising to come out of nowhere. But it, so, yeah. I did that and I was like, okay, this is cool. And slowly like projects got a little bit bigger and um, things kind of grew from there. So yeah, in terms of, yeah, that, that kind of journey, which was yeah. which was kind of working alongside the, the passion projects. So you, at that point in your career, you were kind of, you, you were straddling the commercial whilst also the narrative that was going on at the same time. So was it after the kind of the Primark and some of the commercial work started coming forward that you made Hanging On? 
or was it before then? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. A, I mean, these things take a lot of time. It sounds like it just was A, B, C, and things yeah. work out. But I think for me, it was a little bit harder. And I think mm. I don't know. Maybe people like in London, that that process will be a bit quicker into the commercial world. But for me, like from me being in Leeds, it just takes a little bit longer to kind of get that foot in the door and get that kind of moving. Mm-hmm. But my goal is always to do like uh, features, like a feature film. So everything I kind of, with the short film Passion Project was kind of like, it's a bit of an engine um, to kind of, yeah, to kind of get me there. Just before we get to kind of looking at the commercial work beyond there, could you tell us a little bit about Hanging On, um, your short yes. film? Yeah, so um hanging on we made in 2021 uh it's weird because it was born out of frustration of not getting funding for another project a fiction project Mm -hmm. um and I don't know I feel like documentary is sometimes a little bit more accessible in terms of funders and kind of meeting people and you know access so I I remember yeah lockdown came and I was like okay we can't do this fiction idea that I really wanted and I found kind of projects, uh, found ideas around my community because obviously you couldn't really travel too far. And um, yeah, I found this story of a community that were basically losing their homes and I was following it for months and months. And then, yeah, I really, I saw the Doc Society Made of Truth fund open and I really kind of wanted to spread awareness about what was going on, but I realized it's so many kind of films similar to that gentrification have been made so we made it a bit of a remit to kind of tell it in a completely different way um but yeah this was over the course of a lot of months and obviously the funding process does take a little bit of time but um yeah i paired up with holly who produced the short and um yeah i think we've got a clip though haven't we which might make sense we have indeed yeah i think we've got Um, trailer that one yeah Your life's on hold. I've lived on this estate since 1970. We thought they were going to knock our houses down, build us new ones to live in. We didn't realise at the time that it was going to be we move out and stay out. Again, that's another absolutely brilliant trailer. Um, Thank you, man. So, I'm yeah. How did you do in terms of festivals for for that short film? Yeah. Um, so, hanging on, this film kind of changed my life uh, in terms of and kind of every level really. But it it opened a lot of doors. Um, you know, commercially as well. You know, it, uh, the meetings where I was trying to contact production companies, they kind of came to me. But I think it is just because I we made it in the sense of like it was at a time when a lot of people were looking online and festivals had moved online and there'd already been um, news articles and news reports about this estate. And I used that as a bit of a brief of I'm not we're not going to make this kind of project. You know, we're not going to make something we've seen before. So we watched all that kind of stuff. Um, but I think it was... We, the visual that was really the core of it was was the floating person and you know that person hanging onto their home and like when you see that as a still a floating person a lot of people kind of will go and click on it thinking maybe it's something different or I know a lot of promo music videos and pop kind of stuff use it and but actually to bring people in and, and watch kind of a story which is I, I thought was quite important we needed to kind of um, amplify that message um but yeah festivals are a weird one because it's, it's such a lucky dip isn't it like and I, there's so much rejection in it. Luckily, we we found we premiered at um, Toronto, uh, Sheffield Doc Fest, uh, BFI London, and we had quite a successful uh, run. I think it's because it's a bit weird. Um, it's a bit surreal, like it's floating people, isn't it? So mm. <laughs> people are gonna. It's just kind of got that strange visual, but um, kind of a I don't know. So- so at this point, oh. this point in your career, you've made you know a su- series of su- successful full short films, and you know production companies coming towards you. So at this point, like, how do you go about platforming your work to a- to attract commercial jobs? Like, how how does the what's the relationship there between kind of the, the success of narrative shorts 
and you know looking for work and, and working in commercial world yeah it's a it's a bit of a weird one but it, you you kind of want you kind of want to market yeah hanging on was quite um helpful for me which i didn't really realize because it was kind of conceptual as well as documentary and it had a bit of fiction and um and it was a stunt and we'd never done a stunt or visual effects before so that was a big risk as well i think even the doc society were a bit scratching their heads if it was actually going to happen but um when you take that to add to like the commercial world they have quite a short attention span like i thought 10 minutes of a short film was actually quite short for a short film which i think kind of is in the festival world or at least it could be shorter but they only watch about 30 seconds which i think i, I, I guess a good piece of advice is maybe making kind of a 30 second trailers or short pieces that um if you are sending it out to production companies they can kind of quickly get a taste of like your vibe and and what you're kind of creating um like show reels are obviously great if you're like a DOP or an editor, but as a director, you kind of want to show a little bit more of like uh, a bit of a story and like you can communicate a story within a short space of time. Um, so yeah, no matter how how hard you want people to watch it, they I've always kind of got a response back from the trailers and stuff. Um, but yeah, but and, and uh, yeah, and the question is a little bit about kind of crossing over into the commercial industry, isn't it? And like that, I guess. I it guess is. it's kind of it is yeah so how how are you kind of straddling between kind of the narrative fiction documentary and the commercial so you know how are you how are you specifically attracting yeah. work and production companies to you as a as a talent working in that space yeah it's weird because i think it, the balance is everything when it comes to filmmaking um it's quite there'll be there's a lot of other directors that i think have come from the film academy and probably more successful than me commercially um but I think it's just kind of straddling all of it and kind of keeping your priorities in check. And like, I don't know, like obviously commercial projects are very important. You need to live, you need to eat. Like that is very, very important. But you kind of market yourself on what projects you kind of show the world as well. Mm -hmm. Like, I think I, I like online, I don't, I've done lots and lots and lots of work, but I will only kind of put very few online just because I don't know when, when it comes to kind of, I don't know, funding a short or from, you know, or yeah, in that kind of arena, like if people go in to click on one of your projects and you didn't really want them to see it, like I would say maybe don't have it online kind of thing, or at least on your kind of portfolio, um, if that makes sense. It's, it's a weird thing, because we, but we just live in that time where, you know, it's Insta not really Instagram, but like even your website, uh, or your Vimeo or something like that, where it's kind of like, make sure whatever is on it, you want people to watch. Um, yeah. And also, yeah, and that also communicates to kind of what projects you want. You know, if, you, if you've got loads of projects, you're not, you don't really want to do that anymore, then don't have them on because that's going to be, it's quite hard because it's chicken or the egg situation as well, isn't it? Because yeah. you're like, I want something new, but like I've got this. But so it's just being savvy with it all isn't it it's, there's no easy answer but um yeah oh, that sounds great thank you um so there's this concept of being in the room people are quite often talking about this you know being in the right places speaking to the right people can we talk about that yeah. just a little bit for people that are you know people watching this today might be making fiction they might be making documentaries and just wondering how to navigate that space and to get to the next rung up so yeah yeah well, I just... thought this, I thought this, yeah, because this is hard because a lot, it feels when I was starting in like fiction and documentary, even though it feels like it's all sat the same industry, it there's some weird barrier between it where if you do shorts, you somehow can't do commercials. And like, I've, I've got friends that have done, you know, TV series and getting into commercials is hard. And you're just like, how, why is that crossover? But I think for somebody who's made a short film, this kind of speaks to them like and wanting to go into commercial um here's like a slide of maybe a, a few kind of helpful things that helped me um yeah kind of get in the room and because it, it ultimately i think when it comes to commercial work and like branded stuff it's a lot about relationships and you know when there's money on the line they want to know they can kind of trust you with delivering a project because there's clients there's people and things like that involved um 
So yeah, I'll quickly rattle through this, but we've got uh, send your shorts kind of competitions. Um, there are obviously loads of competitions out there, but commercial production companies really value some more than others. Uh, the BFI Future Film Festival didn't used to be as valued, but now it kind of is. Like there's a lot more prizes linked to commercial production companies and they're a bit more present, which is amazing. Um, 1.4 awards. The shiny awards are amazing. Um, Caroline, who runs that, is a diamond and she like the prizes are having a meeting with an agency or a production company. Um, and it kind of kickstarts that relationship from the beginning. Um, some of these awards are really expensive. Like I was shocked at the price, but if it depends on the subject of that you film or who you are as a filmmaker, if you like, especially from underrepresented kind of background in the industry, if you message them and be like, um, can I submit? Like, I can't afford it. They might, they sometimes might have leeway on that because they don't want to be too exclusive. So always try, always ask, even if it's an no, error, like, um, yeah, shiny awards are really good. The, so in terms of my experience, like finding smaller agencies are brilliant. Like, I think there's a tendency, like to understanding how it all works. If you go to like some production company that's made like an Apple advert and you're like, sick, let's try and get the next one off the ground. Um, that's probably not going to happen because it's so much money and it's so hard to kind of, yeah, the more established companies, you know, there's, there's directors that have worked years and years and that is their sole thing. They don't even do features and everything on the side. So I think for me, when I've worked with the kind of uh, agency leads called Us Studio that did kind of Primark content and like other smaller things, you know, working project to project to project until eventually, you know, like for me, I've worked with um, this agency for about five or six years. Um, and last December they got through their first kind of TV advert which, you know, because I'd worked with them for so long, that was kind of, we've had that relationship and they were like, are you free? Can you do it? And I was like, absolutely. So it's it's being, yeah, present and kind of growing with them. And if you're not in London, there are agencies everywhere in the UK somewhere. Um, so I think it's just linking up with them and seeing what they need and, yeah. Um, meeting people, you know, it sounds easier it's actually obviously sometimes quite hard and it's obviously for people that are introverts it's just a bit of a scary thing to do but again bfi future film festival are good there's all the hubs film hub north and film hub everywhere uh sorry i forgot the names but um they're brilliant the i get asked a lot about coming people coming on set personally but it's sometimes quite hard and as a director it's always a bit chaotic when it comes to actually shooting but it's the producers and production managers that are the people that hire um for film sets so that's just across the board for film tv documentaries and everything um and commercials just to kind of be mindful of like yeah maybe going to producers might be more helpful sometimes than directors even though i try my hardest to try and get people on if i can but ultimately yeah um, promo, music videos, shorts that you're proud of, um, passion projects that showcase you are really kind of important. You know, if you meet someone and they're working for an agency or whatever, send them the project. I mean, the beauty of music videos is they are very short. So if you've got a short film that's really short, they'll they love that. Like, I know a lot of places that's all hanging on, which is 10 minutes. We're like, we love it, but it's just too long. And I'm like, just, you just can't win do you know what I mean so it's like having a trailer or having something that tells the story in a short space of time I think is very very key to kind of yeah getting into the next step and having a few of those if you've got them but yeah um, and also there's another one free the work is brilliant um, as well that's like a platform that kind of pairs people up with agencies and stuff and you can create your profile and, and things like that so, so yeah Fantastic. Thanks, Alfie. That's great. Um, so I think we just had a, a 30 second trailer of Knuckles to have a look at as well before we move on. OK, cool. What have you done to be judging decisions? A couple of predicaments man's been in. 
Could have got me easily locked in prison. The story of Knuckles is chilling. Fear of dying a hero or living long enough and becoming the villain. Again, another absolutely brilliant 30 second trailer. We can see kind of the, the impact of, of using these materials. Could you tell us a little bit about Knuckles? Yeah, so Knuckles was, I think, yeah, just as an example of using this project is where sometimes the commercial and the kind of um, passion projects kind of meet. And it's a beautiful thing when that does happen. Um, Knuckles, I co-directed it with Lauren Luxemburg and it follow, it's basically a visual album kind of documentary um, inspired by Nux, the rapper's um, kind of first project called Alpha House, uh, which won a MOBO last year for best album. And it's, yeah, we basically started that with no, we didn't really have any funding to begin with. It was like, okay, we want to do this. We've got the access with Nux. You know, we love this album. Um, what can we do with it? And it was kind of just playing around with some ideas. And then we took it to Untold Studios who um, helped us produce and support the project. And then once we kind of shaped it a little bit with them, we went to YouTube Music, said, do you want to fund a little bit of this? Like we need a bit of cash. Um, and it became something a little bit bigger than we were expecting. And that was really exciting. It was, a, again, it's a very long process, like short film, lots of contributors. Like Nux has a huge community of people around him and artists and things like that, which was really exciting to be around. Um, but yeah, I think that also helps commercial i mean that was kind of it's like kind of big music video i guess but i think that comes back to the message of like kind of trying to make something and market yourself and like how or like what jobs do you kind of want to make and like obviously we really pushed for that we put a lot of time into it um and you know that they're the kind of projects we want to make so it's kind of yeah pushing yourself down that kind of avenue um and being proactive really of like instead of just waiting for there's, there's i think there's like a feeling sometimes with commercials like of you just kind of sit there and someone sends you a brief and it's like oh happy days but there is a lot of hustling like it is hard to get some projects off the ground and like you push and push and push sometimes people go to the client with an idea client being the product or whatever but you know so yeah so it's kind of just being aware of like that and um yeah it makes complete sense and i think it's, it sounds like you've worked really hard throughout your career to date to try and prioritize and work on those commercial projects that are also representing your your kind of narrative style like aesthetically and also like the areas that you're wanting to work in so that there is an effective crossover of the two um so yeah. can I, just just to pick up on kind of the next bit like what, what are the different pathways into the commercial world so there, there's probably some people here today that are again you know working in the narrative space documentary might be making music videos and are just quite you know wanting a little bit of guidance as to what that that practical route might actually look like yeah so i guess following on from like, like the getting in the room kind of situation um you know there, there are directors here that will say you know go get signed they'll, they'll get signed straight away or they'll do music video and it'll smash it and they'll get signed and they'll do a commercial. And for some people, it's quite quick. Um, for me, it's not been as quick. And it does, it's been a bit more of a hustle, I think. Um, you know, being signed to one of these big, bigger production companies, you kind of work on pitches and treatments and kind of the bigger projects. I mean, you can kind of, I work kind of freelance. So you work across different agencies. There's no kind of like exclusivity. <laughs> if you want um and and that means i can kind of work with whoever i want whereas when you're signed it's kind of like you only make things with that production company mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean there's so many different ways like it's there is no right or wrong there's some people that do like corporate stuff as well as kind of music videos some people are just like music videos some people you know but music videos because they're low budget they will get you to commercials so like I, that is kind of the calling card within the commercial world. So you do your short film, you have those meetings, 
okay, you get a brief for music video. It's quite competitive for music videos, even for the low budgets. But if you can get one made and you can like put some resources behind it and like, you know, I don't know, make it look pretty in some way, like that will is a brilliant thing to kind of bob people uh, in the commercial world to see and be like, okay, this person can um, can do a commercial. But it is a hustle. Like it's not easy. I know people that have another job on the side of doing that. And you're like, how is that even possible? But I think that's just the, you know, the chaos, that struggle to begin with in it. <laughs> but um, but ultimately it's about the relationships. Mm -hmm. For me, I think that is the key that will be similar in everyone's journey is, you know, you meet someone at an agency, you keep the relationship going. They all move in different directions and they all move to different production companies. And, you know, that's amazing as well because if someone goes to a production company and they've moved up to like a producer now mm -hmm. you're like keep in touch with them and it's like oh you know come we let's try and work on something and they can probably send you some stuff so yeah it's, it's Absolutely. You know. yeah i think that that kind of rings true to a lot of elements of the film industry not just in the commercial space it's pe you know yeah people, like people will remember you as they move up through um, the journey and we've certainly seen that on BFI Film Academy programs where young people work together and they get on really well. And then in like five, six time, years time, they're like a, a little power group of filmmakers making funded shorts and things like that. So it's, it really rings true. Um, so that's great. Um, so I think we were going to have a little look at a kind of an example of some of your work. Um, yes. Looking specifically at like the creative process. I suppose what I'm really interested in is is thinking about kind of the skills crossover that's there for, you know, for people that are making narrative um, short films, might be making documentaries, and how that act kind of all mirrors each other. Yeah, the again that kind of mirroring and crossing over, it's it's um, it is all the same basically, and it's just nice when you get a bit more money to make something and. Um, and, you know, it's been a bit more when you're working on, it's crazy because I remember when I did my first kind of commercial piece, it's like with a short film, it's so much pain and emotion and like, it's a beautiful thing. What a luxury we, we have to be able to do jobs like this. But when you're doing like a 30 second advert and it, that's a two day shoot and you, it's so much more relaxed in comparison, um, it just gives you time, you know, because you've got the money and resources and things. Um, but we've got a case study, haven't we? Like a, a, a Primark, which yeah. I think would be cool to show. Um, so, yeah, I thought this might just be, we've got some materials of like documents and things. So let's, yeah, it's this was a 30 second uh, Primark. They call it Motion. They're kind of, this is working with an agency, not like a massive production company, um, which is becoming more common nowadays. So, yeah, we did, it's for the stills. And it's for the motion um, for a new Primark clothing range that was coming out in, I think, 2019 it was. Um, so what will happen is I get sent this document, this brief, you know, I've made that relationship with the agency. They know who I am. We've maybe had a meeting about it. They'll send this through. So we've got the brief, you know, there's kind of a catwalk theme um, approach. This is for both stills and visuals and, and motion, sorry. So it's like yeah it's a bit chaotic but it kind of encapsulates the whole thing these are some references the lookbook catwalk backstage some of the kind of styles of maybe some of the typography they might be using for this campaign bts you know this is like some like mood things that um they're kind of looking for us to capture <clears throat> all sorts of things which is cool so here we go. This is the products. Always just interesting to look at. I mean, models and actors are like two different species. That is like, just completely different in terms of like how you approach it. It's all about looks, whereas acting's about performance and stuff. Um, yeah. So here we go. Here are the people involved. This is the location. I mean, this this is actually the location is something that's quite important and within all of that obviously that's all really important but there'll be a lot of conversations with me and the DOP who's shooting it about how we're going to do it but the location is all about the lighting and because we I mean we've got budget but it's not 
it's not this isn't a tv advert um so it's like how you know we've got daylight how we're going to work with that and things like that um so what will happen after that loads of conversations complications lighting location maybe there'll be a bit of to and fro but we'll work it out we'll get a schedule um and then we'll get the call sheet so this is what it will look like um okay yeah we're on the shot list and I've, I've even spelt some things wrong but that's all right it's very rough it was just between me and the dop this kind of pro this kind of um shot list but it kind of shows like if you see there we've got core shots of fashion show you know there was there was like six six male and six female models and we shot this across two days so and there was stills so we had about half a day per film which is kept crazy like it's a bit more run and gun but still keeping that kind of commercial vibe um so yeah the the core shots of the fashion show and then we've got core shots of the bts um so like the behind the scenes of this fashion show it's to kind of capture this whole story of this new launch of um these clothes but yeah hopefully you can screenshot if you do want to look into the depths of my misspellings <laughs> but uh <clears throat> we but okay so from that i'll show you what actually happened in the end I don't even think that was the final um version, but um yeah, that was that was the piece that I found <laughs> the director's cut, I think it was. And we'll probably just pull up the last slide of the um last one. But so once we've done that, went into the edit, kind of pulled things apart. One thing just to kind of show you the difference between film, I guess, and commercial, more branded content stuff, is if you look at this picture these two girls have got the same outfit on um but one of them's worn slightly different like one the, one of them's back to front and when it's so busy on the day you know you, you do have the client there you do have everyone but things do get missed and like being you know just kind of capturing as much as you can um is really important and being aware of what's going on like obviously we shot a lot of this and we didn't realize so there's an element of like making sure we had them individually um you know so if one of them wasn't worn properly we can just use the other whereas if they were in this shot the whole time it would be problematic so being aware of like it's that you are there to shoot the product because you can get lost sometimes and like running around and floating dresses and you know what i mean things like that but it's actually like if it's not even worn properly it's not gonna it's not gonna see the light of day so um yeah that was like an important kind of thing uh after the shoot that we realized um but thankfully it didn't affect it too much so what what is the kind of the role of i suppose the director on a commercial job rather than a narrative what are the key differences there um the, so obviously you've got the motion director above me there'll be other directors so there's an art director who because it's motion and stills they will sit in the shop together you know, when you're looking to buy like a jumper, you know, you, you see the model wearing it, I don't know, four quid, uh, if it's from Primark, whatever. And then you've got the video in the background. They do need to feel part of the same world. And that's where those conversations higher up with the art director will come in. Um, and sometimes the client will feed in on that as well, either with just motion or stills as well. If there's priority kind of products, when that goes to like, film or documentary obviously there's no rules you can kind of do whatever you want and like there's there's something quite exciting about that um because it's only you kind of involved in that and you've obviously you've got your story you've got like a character that you're following whereas it's obviously it's a product-based kind of thing 
crossing back over there. But in terms of like how you work with people, those skills are the same. Like communicating your vision. Some like there was obviously 40 people on set for that one. So that was like crazy. Um in terms of managing all those people. We should have had a first AD, but didn't. So it was like uh so but that's good experience to transfer when you're doing a film and you've got extras. You know, they they all cross over. It's just yeah, it's just being aware and like communicate communication is key as well, isn't it? Um, because there's so many directors and other people above you. And working with stills as well, which I had not done before. Brilliant. Yeah, it sounds like there's just a huge, huge amount of crossover. Uh, and hopefully this has been really useful so far for people that are wanting to move from narrative documentaries um, to commercial. We're, we're kind of running out of time, really. So I think we're going to have to move into the Q&A um, section of the story. And we've got quite a few questions in the box already. So that's great. Um, so the first one... Um, So I run a production company. We make films for corporates and brands. What what are the two hires you would make to land bigger clients and better work? I already have an editor full time, and I am director of photography and I direct. So that's if they've got kind of corporate, corporate and sorry, what was it? So running a production company, making films for corporates and brands already. Okay. So uh, what are the two hires you would make to land bigger clients and better work? I don't know about two hires. I, I, I'm i not sure I could... I'd probably, I'd probably speak to an agency about that. Maybe mm -hmm. maybe an agency they want to um, make content similar to and just kind of pick their brains about who who's probably best and like what kind of holes need filling in. But I, I, I don't think personally um, I can... I, I know the answer to that. But it's a weird thing of like chicken and egg of like, you know, if you want to make something like definitely go find the content you love and like message the people that have made it, like the producer and how that kind of came about or um, who was important in that. But yeah, sorry, I can't help as much. I think that, that, was, a, that was a good answer. Um, so what's the difference between a passion project and a normal short film? They're the same, really. They're the same. Um <clears throat> Knuckles, uh, no, Knuckles was a passion project. I think, yeah, they're the same thing because passion project, you know, it's just you put everything into it and like, um, yeah, there's some commercials that do like shorts and like music videos, like they sometimes do three of them, commission three and make it a short film kind of thing. But when it's something that you really believe in and you're so passionate about, I think that's when it's like, you know, you'll, you'll push it. And you'll you'll make it happen regardless of what like whatever is in your way. Great. Um, this is a good one. Any tips for writing decks and treatments? Uh, and how do you approach it differently for shorts, documentaries, and commercials? That's a good one. Uh, because you know there, there are things that are different, but one thing that is a very valuable tool as a director to learn is uh, writing a treatment or understanding like where. You don't have to be amazing at graphic design, but just understanding what it is because I'm working in kind of the feature space now and that is those skills are still being used. Um, so the question, sorry, was like, how how do they kind of work across? All yeah, that? so what, how do the, uh, the writing decks and treatments yeah. differ depending on the format? So short films, documentaries, commercial, is there a difference or yeah. do they feel the same? I think with short films, and like TV series, you don't want like loads and loads and loads of pages. Like you kind of want to get the you want to get an essence of the story pretty quickly. And they're all completely different. Like some, but I find commercial ones are much longer. Um, sometimes you know it's thirty second advert, and it can be like I've seen twenty page kind of versions. Um, I think when it gets to feature films, I mean that's obviously in the future. Future they're a lot bigger. They can literally be like a pitch deck can be like a hundred pages I've seen of like loads of ideas and pictures and stuff like that. But I think for shorts, you kind of want to keep it succinct. Like, I think, I don't know, you if you can communicate your idea in five pages, that's amazing. You know, the fewer the visuals, you know, use amazing images that really communicate it. Um, 
but it's weird because it depends what it's being used for you know if it's like a, you're pitching you're trying to get the project mm -hmm. and sometimes it might be a bit longer you know you might want to put some references in and like um but i know music videos two pages is amazing they don't want loads and loads mm -hmm. commercials will be a few more pages longer shorts you don't you want below five or below kind of thing yeah but it varies you know some people might say something different but i think you know people haven't got time you've got mm -hmm. to think they're so busy at the minute and people there's so many projects on like if you can just communicate your idea in as few words and visuals as possible but it's clear and someone understands it then you've smashed it i think mm -hmm. We did. Thanks, Telfy. Um, so the next question: I, if I have a spec uh, project completed, what's the best way to get it to the new to a new client or agency in the hopes of landing a project with them? Um. So that's that's if you've already made something and you you go into mm -hmm. them and like. Um, I'd say get to network, like get to a networking thing. Uh, back to the kind of getting in the room, like. If you've made a spec advert, like submit it to the shiny awards, submit it to kind of some of these competitions, get in the room. Like if, if you can, I know it sounds easy, it sounds easier saying it than it actually is, but you know, if, I know APA, um, the website, they have some kind of commercial events, but if you're able to get in the room somehow, you know, track these people down, don't stalk them, but track them down at like a networking thing and just be like, I want you to see this, this. it's got, a, you know, if you feel proud of it, be like, I want you to see it. Can you just give me some feedback? That's always a beautiful thing. Because you're just like, I just want your opinion on it. And then like, they'll give you some feedback and then they've actually watched it, you know? And then you can send them something else again later. And that's relationship, isn't it? That's building that um, thing. Brilliant, thank you. Um, okay, well, we've got loads of really brilliant questions here. <clears throat> Okay, um, so this is a good one. So, so your work straddles between commercial and narrative features, shorts. Given the difference in both spaces, have you found that it dilutes your brand and prevents you from any potential work at all? From doing commercials. Yeah, or... yeah. So we've we've been talking specifically yeah. about how, how you're balancing straddling between the two. But have you found that there's been any kind of uh, it's a weird one it's a weird one because i guess i guess it's where you are and what you're really pushing for at that time you know there was like if i if all i put out was commercial work and like that was like my my holy grail you know this is this is what i'm doing that you know i probably would land more adverts and things and branded content than i am now but um i don't know and i did do that a little bit earlier um like my career like maybe like a few years maybe not even that long ago but because i'm working towards my debut feature now i've kind of i kind of showcase my shorts a little bit more um and less so my music videos you know because i've kind of made the jump from doing music videos to doing some more branded content and commercial work like yeah i kind of it's mainly kind of short films and stuff that i'm I'm pushing but yeah maybe it is maybe there could be a couple of extra projects coming away instead yeah but that is the that's directing in it the mm -hmm. balance in like everything life money like but also commercial work and yeah there's no easy answer for that i don't think but it's all right mm. uh no that was a good answer um yeah we've got loads so the next one um so I've seen that you took part in the Toronto International Film Festival Lab in 2023. How was that experience and how did it get you in? So I think what we're talking about, did this benefit your kind of commercial journey into the commercial world? The the, uh, the Toronto Filmmaker Lab, well, yeah, was amazing. Um, it That didn't, I don't think that's helped um, me get into the commercial world, but I think yeah, I don't think it's actually helped, but it's a weird thing of like, I also don't know. You know, I've had work mm. since then. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't, but because they're all, you know, because I did that, maybe someone saw it and they thought of me for a project. I don't know. Or was it always coming my way? It's a weird thing. So, yeah. 
yeah it's a weird yeah well it's definitely helped in terms of like my future work um mm -hmm. but in terms of like yeah there's projects coming in but it's a weird time for the industry as well like in terms of where it is and commissions and stuff um okay um so so this next one is kind of talking about both commercial and narrative so how do you work with an editor to create an image you have in your mind for the project mm. so is that okay that might be a treatment editor i think that person's referring to because mm -hmm. I think when you get to kind of TV, which is even, you know, I've not done loads and loads of TV adverts, but what, if you get signed to a production company, they will work with you on a treatment editor. Um, and yeah, they will help you do a pitch deck, um, make it sleek and send it to the client. I haven't actually had a lot of experience doing that, but, you know, going back to the pathways of how to get into this commercial industry, I do know a few people that have gone and be trained themselves on like in design and like building pitch decks and treatments. And it is a very valid way of getting in. And like they've managed to package things up for other directors, learn the craft that way, like how to communicate these ideas. And they are now directing commercials. You know, they've kept that muscle of like making fiction and documentary on the side mm -hmm. as well. But like, yeah, they've made it work that way, which I think is really important and interesting um that's again it's quite a london-based role that so it depends on where you are and like what your situation is sounds good so we've got quite a few questions that are coming together with similar themes on this one um so it's all around uh, short film courses and entry points into the industry are there any film courses in particular um that you could recommend for for people that are wanting to get into the industry at this level yes there <clears throat> I'm not just plugging this because it's BFI, but it, uh, the Film Academy is obviously amazing. They do run um, labs like the Script Lab. So I did that like halfway that we saw a, tra a trailer at the beginning. That was selected for the Script Lab in 2019. That's how long it's taken. Um, I developed that as a script on that lab with a few of the writers. And then we submitted it for funding after we made Happy On. So like yeah you know you, that that was really helpful can you tell us a little bit about the the process of the script lab and what it what it means for people that are kind of breaking into the industry yeah so it, you start off i think with just a one page information like a one pager about why you want to make this project or like a paragraph i can't remember um but it's for people that you know they get script editors and they try and help you write a script basically a short film script um and yeah and they but you're working with kind of bfi talent execs so they can give you some helpful advice and like what's good what's you know what they maybe they're looking for but you don't really want to make it for funders you want to make it for i don't know whatever um but that you know it's just getting your head around writing a script for me i needed that at that point and that was really helpful mm -hmm. but there are other labs there will be more coming i know bfi have had an open call for like company so i guess for people to keep an eye out on newly launched things in the next few months, I think there'll be a few more popping up. Mm -hmm. um, Creative UK, I, I did a short flick scheme, which was brilliant. Um, not sure they run that as much anymore, but yeah, they like directors labs, things where you can like meet other people um, and you don't need labs to make films, you know, all they do is kind of allow you to meet people and expand your network and like, yeah, have those discussions and stuff. Um, so yeah, if you're able to write the scripts yourself and like send them in or send them to other writers and get feedback through when you like meet at these events, I think it's, that's like your own lab, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Alfie. Um, yeah, we've still got quite a few left, so we're going to have to do the last few here. Um, so you mentioned starting off pitching for and directing music videos as a starting point in your career. Um, do you have any tips for getting your name on that list of potential directors to pitch for those projects? So when you're starting out in the music video world, what you know, what was it that you did that really helped you kind of get those first few projects? I think what was it? 
do you know i think it was like a spoken word short film i did and it was mm. like pretty low budget but we shot it, it locally in leeds and we did it with like a spoken word artist and just having the freedom just to kind of experiment was the thing that that opened that door uh, i was quite lucky with that opportunity but you know if you think if you can kind of tell a spoken word or tell a short film in in a different way or like trying to yeah rather than copying someone because i know there are a lot of loads of videos out there which are amazing but try and just do something completely different and spend time thinking about it i think that's and you don't need money for that people can you can see your voice in something that's shot on an iphone if you've really thought about why you're using an iphone like how you can build that world and stuff i think you know it just takes a bit of thought really but um yeah, that, that can sometimes be a calling card. Sometimes, yeah. Brilliant. Um, so this is somebody kind of starting out their career at the beginning, really. So if you haven't got a team um, like video production company or a team of people that are making films specifically, who do you recommend to find first in order to get to that point where you're making films as a team and as a group? Um... Is it a producer or, you know, what, what, where do yeah. you... I'd I'd say like yeah, definitely like speak to producers. I'd say maybe going in as a production assistant on some shorts, like mm -hmm. meet some people that way and see. I think you want to be able to see how the team all work together as well. It's a bit daunting. I would be a bit scared if I was thrown into the middle of a team. You have to kind of somehow direct it and pull everyone together if you've not done it before. Mm -hmm. So. If you're able to shadow someone or just stand on set like for the day, I think that's amazing. I remember whenever there was a shoot in Leeds, I'd get a call from like a neighbor or a friend nearby and be like BBC around the corner or someone's shooting. And I'd go, I'd cycle over and I'd just stand there and watch all day. And like, but that was desperate to get on set. But I was just looking at like how people communicated and you end up speaking to people at like film, like, why are you here? Why are you watching us? And then you speak to them all, just really interested. And you get invited to the next day's shoot and you're like, somehow you, you, you're shadowing, you know? So, um, yeah, yeah, thank you. Sounds good. Um, so as somebody who didn't go to uni and isn't going to go to university, um, yeah. what advice do you have for, for me in terms of creating our own projects, teaming up with people, you know, across the UK? What, what advice have you got? Um, oh, the one thing the one main thing that's kind of there's so much rejection in this industry and it's so competitive funding but if you can find a way just to keep making short films yourself like they don't have to be loads of money like i got my dad in loads of short films initially before i had any funding and like used my street and used a car to film in like if you're able to kind of tell a story with just what you have and develop your voice that way I think is the most important thing. Like, yes, eventually you might want to apply for funding and stuff like that. And that's amazing um, when you feel ready. But yeah, I feel like my own projects kind of saved me a bit. Some, you get so much knockback and you're like, oh, is, it, is this working out? But actually when you've got that idea and story, you're like burning to tell and you're like, I can't, I can't not do this. I think that is the the single thing that really pushed me through like not going to university and stuff. I'm like, you know, I, I didn't have doubts of going, you know, I, I kind of wanted to go at some points, but then, yeah, it's, that's the most important, I think I found, kind of honed, honing your voice that way. I know people that have done one film every month of the year, so they've made 12 short films as like a deadline, um, which works, you know, you don't have to put them all online, just pick one of the 12 which you think might be all right. Yeah. But it's going to develop you, you as a filmmaker. Thanks, Alfie. Um, just to add to that as well, um, across the UK, the BFI Film Academy Plus programmes are across each region across the UK, and some of the opportunities there would benefit, help and support you. Some of those, depending on the region, include DIY filmmaking challenges, micro short film funds that are good for you, and also networking events all across the UK. Um, which are a really perfect level really for you to, to have a look at so if you just have a look at bfi film academy plus activity in your region um yeah you'll see if there's anything there that's good for you 
Um, so, just a couple more questions. Yeah. How do you manage your time between furthering your own practice, working on personal projects, so that's narrative documentaries, um, and juggling the work that pays the bills? What does what does that look like for you as somebody that's working across both narrative and uh, commercial? It's a roller coaster. It's up and down. No, it's um, it's just not easy. Again, it's like that is the. I wish there was an easy answer for that, but that's why I work. I spent a long time working in hospitality in a bar in a restaurant, and I managed to find a place that kind of understood if I needed to go very quickly and kind of come back. And that was, you know, at least I knew I was getting something. Whereas this industry, if you're going completely freelance, I, I was always a bit like, oh. I'm not, you know, you don't, I don't want to fully rely on that. Um, so for me, that was helpful to know that, okay, regardless, it's obviously tough. It's not an easy thing, but starting out, that was like, okay, I know I can eat food. I know I can like pay for the basics. Um, anything else is a bonus kind of thing, but I don't know. I, th you need, I think for me, I was like, I just prioritize in the short form and like fiction and, as long as I had something cooking in the background, like doing commercial work was like on top of all of that, which sounds crazy. And it is when that happens because you're just like everywhere, but it's tough. You know, there'll be times when you don't get much commercial work. Okay. Flex the fiction muscle or like do some documentary stuff. Um, that's the beauty of the documentary. You can just go out and it's like, find an amazing story. Um, but fiction as well, when you apply for funding, takes a long time to get answers and feedback and stuff. So I went and, you know, started researching for a documentary and then, you know, but keeping that, but commercial is very much about relationships I've, I've found. So that's something that you just need to keep kind of doing like every six months, checking in with people or every year and seeing what they're making, you know, producers that you've maybe you've met or an agency that you've met um yeah that's how i've done it but maybe some people might say different but it's not easy that sounds great but, and also I, i'm not in london like someone in london will say something completely different i think thanks yeah. Alfie. that's great um so this is a really good one so there's a we've just got time for another two questions so th there's a couple of yeah. questions that kind of allude to this which is it's really interesting so from the start of your career did you have an understanding of what stories you wanted to tell or how did you kind of find that taste and voice for yourself as you went through your career yeah um I don't know I think shorts are brilliant for like finding your voice they say keep saying the voice of a filmmaker but I think they it just allows you to experiment and like what do you really enjoy getting out of it um there was a lot of people not long ago, I, I did a talk the other day and um, a lot of people were talking about film festivals the whole time. And obviously that is a really great calling card to kind of get noticed. And like, it's a kind of sometimes a stamp of approval almost, but I think it's like, why do you want to make it? Because short films take a long, a film in general takes a long time. It's expensive, but you know, for me, so we did hanging on about the community who had been evicted and, it wasn't really about the film festivals at all. Like that was, don't get me wrong, it's life-changing and a huge bonus, but we wanted to make it for the community. Like I genuinely wanted to help um, them kind of save their homes. And that screening was so powerful. And that alone was a reminder of why we wanted to kind of make that film and like, the type of films I want to make. I normally have somebody in mind when I make films now. I don't know why that's kind of, oh like making it for someone maybe I've met or like yeah. But it took it takes a, a minute to find that, you know. I think it's not something like overnight. It's like, okay, I want to do this. And like that just keeps changing a little bit. And I think it always will as film like as artists and stuff. You never like set on one road. You're always changing, which is what's exciting about it. Um, but yeah, great. Thanks, Alfie. That's brilliant. Um, so last question today. Um, so this is coming from a freelance videographer specialising within music videos at the moment. Um, so currently working with a number of local artists, but want to work with more established artists in the future. Um, a bit stuck as to how to progress. So have you got any advice on how 
uh, they can develop further into the industry and progress higher. In terms of like, but yeah, going from videography to, yeah, I think, yeah, because videography, again, videography and like almost directing commercial branded content is again different and there's so many different avenues um i think if you're able to kind of work in a team like if you want to be a dop that's videography is an amazing kind of thing but it's a weird thing because it's like if someone's going to pay you a lot of cash to do some videography work sorry Alfie, could you just tell us what dop means <clears throat> sorry uh director of photography I'm using jargon. Right. Um but yeah, if you're if you want to be a cameraman, cameraman, it's that's amazing to kind of test out angles and lenses and stuff like that. But if you're wanting to be a director, it would be really beneficial to kind of work with a DOP director of photography who can take care of that role and you can kind of just do your own things. Like I remember to begin with, I was like, oh, I just want to split my fee so I can work with a DOP so we can work as a team rather than it just being me shooting the whole time. It makes it a bit more fun. Um, and I wanted to get more experience of working like in that relationship. So I'd say, I know it's not really great advice because if you're splitting your fee, but, you know, but sometimes if you, it's all right to do videography work. Um, just kind of think about what you might get out of it might be amazing research for a fiction project which i found before but also maybe it's not and it's just a bit of money and that is equally fine thank you so much for watching the bfi film academy lab session on creating commercial content with alfie barker we run monthly live digital labs and would love to see you at our next event later this year to find out more about this session visit our labs webpage where you can find which you can find in the video's youtube description and follow Film Academy on our social media channels. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.